Hello, I'm Joanna Catron. I'm the Assistant Director and Curator at Gary Melcher's Home and Studio. And today we're in Collection Storage, where I'd like to invite you to join me as I unpack three packages that have just been returned to us from Richmond Conservation Studios. We patiently waited to open up these packages for seven days to allow the paintings to acclimatize and also in the off chance that the plastic packaging has been contaminated by coronavirus. Um, before we begin, I'd like to preface by saying that we own the largest collection of works by Gary Melcher, some 1,600, and many of them are well over 100 years old and have suffered the usual wear and tear that paintings do when they're installed and deinstalled, packed for travel, uh, on loan, uh, that kind of thing. So they need work, they need care, and our uh, special mandate of our mission is that we protect and care for our paintings so that they can be enjoyed by you for the next 100, 200 years. Thanks to the generosity of the Margaret Walker Puritan Foundation and the gifts of very enthusiastic friends, we are able to maintain a conservation program that is ongoing. We have four or five paintings or frames uh, in process in the labs at any given time. We evaluate these paintings first and then we treat them if they uh, need it. Paintings and their frames. Um, with so many pictures and so much need, you might wonder how we make a decision as to what work gets fixed first. Priority is given to uh, the works that we consider our premier paintings the ones that have the most market value and are the most representative of Gary Melcher's style and subject. So those would be the th that would be the first criteria. We also want to consider is the painting a popular with our audience or is it likely to be requested for loan? That may have a bearing on where the painting sits in this or conservation queue. Of course, we have to ask ourselves, is the painting vulnerable to imminent loss or damage? Is there active flaking of paint or is there a loose ornament on the frame that would preclude it from travel? And then we also have to ask ourselves, how much is required to do the work of conservation? Is it going to be a quick and easy fix or can it be a protracted affair? Sometimes Gary Melcher's uh, mixed unconventional media that complicated the process. He might mix, for instance, a water base and an oil base media. So those are things that can either move a painting to the bottom of the list or the top, depending on the last factor, budget. What can we afford to do today and what can we afford to put off in the future? So we're almost ready for Christmas. Okay, we're ready to begin. This gets exciting for me when pictures come back from conservation. It's a little bit like Christmas morning. The first picture that we have is called Self-Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. That is Gary Melcher's. Painted about 1890. Well, not about. It's signed 1890. He was 30 years old. And I'm looking to see that the issues of surface modeling and uneven varnish in this painting have been resolved. It's very distracting. It's a very moody painting. And I'm wondering if cleaning some of that surface grime is going to make it a little brighter and dispel some of the mystery. Here we go. Wow. Oh, they've definitely resolved the problem of the uneven surface. It's all consistently uh, varnished and there's no distracting modeling at the bottom of the canvas. It's definitely, definitely brighter, uh, but there's still, there's still a great deal of mystery. So this is a self-portrait of the artist at the age of 30. And, you know, an artist draws so much, at least this artist, 
from his observations of the natural world, but also from the imagination. And I think he's trying to convey that in this portrait of himself. You only see half of his face. The other half is left in shadow. So maybe he's trying to tell us that there's more to this man than what you see. It's a very good likeness of Gary Melchers at age 30. And this is something interesting I just noticed. The conservators told me in their report that they, they found that Melchers went back to the painting and added more paint. And he, it, he left it in the frame, added more paint and stopped right up to the frame. And now I can see two different colors. There's a bright ultramarine blue and then more of a cerulean uh, color. So that's kind of interesting. Why he went back, I don't know. And he also went back and, and fussed with the varnish, and that's why they said it was so mottled and so darkened. But it, it turned out beautifully, and I'm excited because this painting uh, lives in a beautiful neoclassical style frame uh, made in the 19th century. I don't know if it's American or French, but it has been uh, conserved as well by our frame conservator Sandy Jensen and now I'm going to go ahead and hold it up to its frame. I can install it because that takes a little bit more effort but I'm going to hold it up and see how it looks, how it will look in its new newly restored frame. Wow the image of Gary Melchers really pops. That's going to draw our visitors in. There's, there's a, a lot of questions here about Gary Melchers. The way he painted himself leaves a, a, lot of, uh, a lot to the imagination. All right, we're ready to move on to the next painting. And I'll say right now that most of our premier paintings have already received restoration. So we're moving into more unique items, novel pieces for Gary Melchers that I've always wanted to uh, be able to, to show to our audiences. And the next two paintings were sent to the conservation lab because Gary or someone else had cut the canvases out of their stretchers. So here's an example of a painting the backside of a painting in which the canvas is mounted on a stretcher. So it's these wooden members on which the canvas, the fabric, is tacked and it holds the canvas taut uh, and appropriate for painting. So that's a stretcher. So our next painting is nude with a blue robe. I shouldn't see too much difference. It wasn't terribly dirty. It just needed to be mounted on a stretcher. And it was unevenly cut out of its original stretcher, so the edges were kind of raw and crooked and uneven. Oh boy. So we can see now, I can already see at the back of the picture, you can see the wooden members. It now has a stretcher. nude with a blue robe. I can see the raw edges of the canvas have been mounted on a second canvas liner which is mounted on the stretcher. And so that eliminates the problem with all the unevenness. It's just kind of blended in to the new canvas liner. Nude with a blue robe, that, that is a beautiful little painting, a very intimate little glimpse into the artist's studio. What's so different about this painting is that when Melchers typically painted a nude, those nudes were very large and provocatively close to the picture plane and very, uh, he created the illusion of a three-dimensional round body, round and real and almost plastic and very posed, very static. We have a totally different feeling with this nude. Uh, there's a lot of action in here that is produced by very free gestural brushwork. So it seems very spontaneous, as if Melchers has just stepped into the studio and the model has kicked away the protective robe. 
It's really a neat picture. She's almost evanescent, as if she's going to disappear in a moment. It's just so unusual for Melchers, and I'm very happy to be able to share it with our audience. Okay, we're ready for our third and final painting. I've titled this painting because the artist, again, like the last picture, cut the canvas out of its stretcher, as far as I know, never exhibited it, never framed it, and I have no title. So I call it Male Nude Torso. We do know that it was painted in 1912. It is signed and dated by the artist. And that would put him possibly in Weimar, Germany, where he was a professor of art from 1909 to 1915. But he also had a studio in Holland and one that was somewhat active in Paris. When you see this painting, uh, when I look at the painting, it just makes me think that it's a German production. We won't see a whole lot of change in this painting. It was in pretty good shape and not terribly dirty. It's just that it had uh, uneven borders because it had been rather cursorily cut out of its stretcher. Okay, let me get my gloves on. Wow, fantastic. And you can see here is the actual original edge. Way in, an inch in from the edge is the original uh, edge of the canvas and the conservators have painted in the rest of his body so that it fits neatly um, in this frame. Let's that. Okay, so now male nude torso. I have often wondered about the artist's goal with this painting. He really wasn't very interested in the subject of the, of the male nude. The only times before 1912 that he really painted a lot of male nude figures were in his mural cycles uh, for the uh, Chicago Exposition in 1893 and related versions at the Library of Congress in 1895. But this man is nothing like those images. Those figures are allegorical figures. They are very detached. They do not communicate beyond the picture playing with the audience like uh, this gentleman does. So I, I wonder what was he intended for? It reminds me a little bit of a sporting picture in our collection called The Fencer. Many of you know it. It's always up. It's a favorite. And it has a related version at the Detroit Institute of Arts called The Fencing Master. Uh, the, the fencer in those two pictures and the male nude torso, this gentleman, really make strong contact uh, with the audience. They look directly at you in their, their body language. The hauteur of this uh, model is uh, commanding, uh, demanding our attention, just like the fencer. So is it a sporting picture? Was it intended as a male wrestler or a boxer? Oh, I, I don't know. He never brought it any further, uh, the concept, any further than this study. I, I love the brushwork. It's very Sargent-esque, as in John Singer Sargent. It's, uh, there's a lot of bravura. Uh, almost a virile brushstroke that is really the stylistic equivalent of the attitude of the subject uh, himself. Melchers also painted some allegories. He painted a figure called Picardia uh, of a, a woman who re represented the region of Picardy. And I'm wondering, is this possibly an allegorical figure for Germany or German might. Bismarck had built up the Navy. The Kaiser continued to build uh, up arms. And I, I don't know, there's something about his commanding presence that makes me go out on a limb <laughs> and, and um, conjecture that that may have been the intention for this painting. It's a wonderful painting. And uh, it is going to be fabulous in the studio. Uh, uh, because he has such, such personality. It, it'll be important that I pick the right frame for this and the previous picture, the uh, nude with the blue robe, 
um, because I don't want in any way to distract from this man's personality or diminish the force of his personality. Uh, so I'm going to have to find a period frame that I can judge Melchers would find appropriate and, and that would be uh, appropriate and not uh, distracting from the personality of the subject.